All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's training. Today, we're gonna to be talking about filtration best practices as well as pressure operation best practices when it comes to your forehead pressure fryer. My name is Randall Levy, technical trainer here at Henny Penny Corporation. And what you're gonna learn from today's training is best practices for that filtration and pressure operation so that you can get the most performance out of your pressure fryer and also help avoid some of those costly service calls. So the first topic that we're gonna talk about is filtration. And when it comes to filtration, changing that filter pad once a day is gonna be critical to the overall success when we go to filter. That filter pad is gonna be located in our filter pan, which is gonna be below our fryer here. Now I have this one pulled out because this unit's on the lift, but what we would need to keep in mind when it comes to changing that filter pad once a day, the reason we're doing that is because we will get a lot of crumb buildup on top of that filter pad and that can restrict the amount of oil that comes back up to our fry pot when it's being filtered. So what can happen there is we can actually get too much crumb buildup causing restriction and that filter pump motor has to work extra hard. And if it does for too long, then it can trip the thermal overload causing us a problem to where now our fryer is not filling up at all. So if we run into that situation where we hear our filter pump motor humming, but it's not bringing any oil back up, we're gonna need to reset that filter pump motor. But the first thing that we need to keep in mind is we need to give it about roughly 30 minutes to cool down before we try and reset that pump motor. Now the pump motor is gonna be located at the back of the fryer. So if we look over here, you can see it located at the back of the fryer right here. And then you'll see that red reset button right there on the side. And that red reset button is gonna to need to be what we push in on. So now if we switch over here to the workbench, we'll see our filter pump motor assembly here that we just looked at on the fryer. And I'm gonna switch this around so that you can see this better. And you'll notice our red reset button right here on the fryer. So this is where we would have to pull it out. And then we could come back here and push in on that red reset button pretty hard. But like I said, we need to make sure that we give it about 30 minutes for it to cool down before we try and reset that. So that's gonna be a big thing when it comes to changing the filter pad once a day and that we could run into if we don't. Now also with changing that filter pad, I have our assembly right here in front of me. First, we have our pickup tube right here and I will go ahead and unscrew this off, set this off to the side. And then we have our crumb catcher. Now this is gonna catch the bulk of the large crumbs to keep it off the top of our filter envelope. And we would need to empty that into the trash can. And then we're gonna have our filter envelope with our screen on the inside. Now, something that's very important when it comes to changing this out is we have our filter envelope clips here. We're gonna have two of them. And then we have our envelope. Now, when we would pull this out, pull our screen out here and then change our filter envelope and put the new one on, something that's very important is to have a proper seal here to keep crumbs out of our filter system, we need to make sure that we fold these corners over at a 45 degree angle first. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold that edge over to where we have a nice seal all the way across there now. And then after we do so, then we can go ahead and put our filter clips on there. And with that, after we get both of those on there, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a nice seal to keep all those crumbs out of our filter system. If we get crumbs into our filter system, all things, all kinds of things can happen from there, such as re, uh, seeing slow return filling to our fry pot with oil, or potentially even clogging up our filter pump motor and causing a service call. So this is gonna be very important when it comes to changing out our filter pad once a day, is making sure that we fold that envelope over so that it's sealed and then also make sure that we're using our clips. Some of you in the stores may actually have a triangular bar that takes the place of these filter clips and that bar would slide over the end of this and then the ring would go over the woven outlet right here in the center. So some of you may see that triangular bar in your stores. So when it comes to putting that back together, we want to make sure that all of our filter uh, component parts are dry before we go back together because remember water is going to be an enemy of oil. So we'll go ahead and put our crumb catcher back on 
and then we can install our pickup tube. And once we do that, something else that's important to keep in mind is gonna be our wing nut connection, which is gonna be on the fryer. So we wanna make sure that when we put this back in our filter pan and we slide our filter pan back into place in the fryer, we wanna make sure that this connection right here is tight when we screw that onto the pickup tube. So we wanna make sure that this wing nut is tight. It doesn't have to be cranked down super hard, but we do want it tight enough that it's not sucking air at this connection because if it does, then we could run into a slow filling of our fryer. So that brings me to another item that it's going to happen throughout the day periodically, and that's called filter lockout. So after a predetermined amount of cook drops, the fryer is going to potentially lock you out if it's programmed. Each customer is going to be slightly different in the way that's programmed in the fryer. But if the fryer is equipped or if it is programmed with filter lockout, then it's going to lock you out until a filtration has been done. So at that point, we would have to shut our power switch off and then we would go ahead and perform a filtration. Now, one thing I like to bring up when it comes to any time we're doing a filtration on the fryer, a good habit to get into is after the fryer has successfully brought up all that oil back up to our fry pot, it's going to be sucking air from the bottom of the pan because there's no longer any oil in there. That's a good thing. We wanna go ahead and let that run for just a few seconds after it's filled up our fryer. But the big thing is we don't wanna let it run too long. So after it's ran for a few seconds and brought all that oil back up, we'll go ahead and close our return valve here. And then we will turn our switch back to off and turn the pump motor off. And what we, like I was saying, what we wanna do is not let that filter pump motor run with no oil in it for too long. What this leads to is there is rollers inside the filter pump that can actually wear down over time. And especially if we don't have oil running through there, it's going to prematurely wear those out. So what we can end up seeing is a pump failure shorter um, than what we would normally see. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into pressure components. So we'll jump over here. And we're going to talk about our dead weight assembly first. When it comes to our dead weight assembly, this is what the fryer uses once we're building pressure inside the fry pot to regulate that pressure inside. So we would see on our gauge here, uh, a properly working fryer is going to be in the green. And if we see that needle getting into the yellow right here, that's usually a good indicator that this dead weight needs cleaned. Now, something that we need to keep in mind is this dead weight needs cleaned daily. So we would pull off our cap here and then actually pull out our dead weight. And that dead weight, what happens is throughout the cooking cycle with this cap on, that dead weight is gonna bounce up and down to regulate that pressure out the exhaust line and then over to our steam stack over here. But what can happen is if this does not get cleaned on a regular basis, we can get uh, a bunch of buildup inside here, causing this dead weight to not free flow up and down inside the cap. So daily, we need to pull this cap off. We need to clean inside this housing and then also clean both our dead weight and our cap with hot soapy water so that it can operate properly. Now, before I go ahead and screw that back on, I wanna talk about our safety relief valve here. So the safety relief valve is a safety that's designed to release pressure at 14 and a half PSI. Now that happens if, like I had mentioned, the dead weight has not been cleaned properly and gets too much buildup and it can't regulate, then this is designed to go ahead and act as a bypass to get rid of that steam to prevent too much buildup. Now, something that you can see occasionally, sometimes in a store, if people have been pulling this ring to release pressure is you'll see a safety relief valve just steadily leaking steam throughout the cook cycle. We do recommend annually once a year that this safety relief valve can be unscrewed with an adjustable wrench from this assembly. And then it would look like this right here. 
And what we would do is we would soak this overnight once a year in a hot soapy water or a detergent solution to go ahead and release all that buildup inside there. And this will help uh, get rid of that buildup inside and then also help prevent it from getting in the future. And then we would just go ahead and screw that back on. We would need to make sure that we use a Teflon sealant when going back together. And then at that point, we could go ahead and put our dead weight back in and our cap. So another item that's very important when it comes to pressure is going to be our pressure solenoid. The pressure solenoid here, it has a coil on top of the valve that is energized by the control panel and basically it opens and closes the valve at both the beginning and the end of the cook cycle. So I have a pressure solenoid here with the coil not attached to it so that you can see what it looks like. And I'm just gonna unscrew this top here and take that off. And we have this paddle inside here that during, at the beginning of the cook cycle before it started, this valve is in the open position. As soon as we push that timer and we start the cook cycle, the magnet is gonna pull up and that valve is gonna close. Now, what we could see is the reason I bring this up is sometimes we run into a situation at the end of a cook cycle, our pressure is not releasing on our fryer and we can't get our spindle undone. The reason I bring this up is because what that usually is, is this pressure solenoid is all gummed up with oil and residue, and it's not allowing that valve to open back up and allow that steam to go out to our exhaust stack so that we can undo our lid. So what happens is there is a little spring right here on the top. This is the only thing that opens that valve back up. So if we get uh, build up inside here, then that can cause that solenoid to seize up and then it would uh, result in a service call. So now let me talk about why that happens. So the root cause for this valve getting clogged up and also getting too much re uh, oil residue in here and also our safety relief valve comes from the inside of our fry pot and overfilling it with oil. You'll notice we have two marks in here. It's a common uh, misconception that these are minimum and maximum marks. These are actually cold and hot marks. So what that means is with the fryer, with oil in the fryer at operating temp, that oil needs to no, not be above this line. Because what happens is if we have this fryer overfilled with oil, and that oil level is right here, already above that line. And then we put all of our product in on top of that, that oil is gonna raise even more. And what happens is once we close the lid and start cooking, all that extra oil in the fry pot has to go somewhere. And it goes out our steam system here to our dead weight. And then it also goes out our exhaust to our pressure solenoid. And what that does is that wreaks havoc on those two on those two items. So we get a bunch of buildup inside here, also in our safety relief valve, and then we get a bunch of buildup in our pressure solenoid. This all leads to service calls that can be expensive because sometimes it's past the point of simply cleaning for the operator. So just remember that when we're seeing pressure issues where it's not releasing or something like that, the root cause is the inside of the fry pot has too much oil in it. Because like I mentioned, it has to go somewhere during that cook cycle. So naturally the pressure pushes it out those pathways and causes problems on these components. So what about the steam exhaust stack? I'm sure many of you have seen where you would have like the volcano effect where you have oil and water spewing out the top of the exhaust stack kind of maybe looking like a science fair project. What that roots from as well is once again, too much oil inside the fry pot. So as it goes out our steam exhaust and comes over and collects inside our exhaust stack, we get that oil residue that ends up sitting down in the bottom of this stack. And what happens is since 
up here at the front, up here at the front at our condensation line, it doesn't come out because it's clogged in this line right here. So if we go back, if we go back up here, it gets clogged and it will not allow that oil to drain down to the bottom and come out our condensation line into our condensation pan. So what happens is it all ends up coming out the top. Now remember, the root cause from that as well is once again, too much oil inside the fry pot, and then it ends up getting into all those components that we just mentioned. Now, something that can be done for the steam exhaust stack to help with that is we recommend either once monthly or when you're doing a clean out on your fryer and you're changing the oil with new oil, you can actually take a, a cup or a pitcher of hot soapy water or of a detergent water mix, and you can pour down your stack and then come up to the front here to make sure it's coming out of your condensation line into your uh, condensation drain pan. So that would be a good indicator of that. So, Remember, when it comes to a lot of our pressure-related issues that we're going to run into, a lot, of them re a lot of them root from the fry pot being overfilled with too much oil to begin with. And it just wreaks havoc on all this uh, pressure system here and its components. So... So the next item that we're going to talk about is the lid assembly and how that has an impact on the pressure system. So if we zoom in here, we'll see our lid assembly here. And what we could end up running into is maybe steam leaking out around our lid assembly right here. Now, there's a couple of things that we can do at the store level to either solve this problem or to prevent it from happening in the future. And the first one is going to be if I open up our lid assembly, you'll notice the gasket on the bottom side of our lid. This gasket is recommended to be flipped or reversed every 90 days, so every three months. And what that would consist of is taking this gasket out and actually flipping it around and then putting it back in place. Sometimes what you'll see is some black charring on here, and what that causes is a poor sealing surface. So it's, it's recommended that we would take and flip that every 90 days. And then also, if it's been flipped a couple of times, then what we would run into is just needing to replace this rubber gasket. You'll want it to be pliable when you push in on it. It should, it should give a little bit. It should not be hard and brittle or black and charred. So that's something that we would want to look for. The other thing that we're gonna to need to do every 90 days, every three months, is we're gonna to need to do our limit stop adjustment. Now the limit stop adjustment, what it does is it puts the proper amount of pressure on this lid assembly and that gasket for it to seal properly. Now the reason we need to do this limit stop adjustment every 90 days is because if it does not have the proper amount of pressure on that gasket and the lid assembly, what can happen is we can end up keep turning this to get it tighter for it to stop leaking, which is the incorrect method. It needs to be adjusted here. And what results from that is we actually put too much pressure on this cross arm right here and on the sides of it, it will actually crack and then it creates a safety risk. So what we need to do is we need to be adjusting the limit stop assembly every 90 days so that we can prevent that from happening. And keep in mind, if we have a cracked cross arm here, this, this ends up being a very expensive service call. So these assemblies are very expensive, plus it takes the technician to replace those. So that's something that we wanna avoid. If you have any questions on how that limit stop is done, uh, keep in mind, we do have an instructional video on the channel to show how that is done. And then also for reversing the lid gasket, 
we have a video on the channel as well for how that process is done. So be sure to check those out and it'll give you some tips and some pointers on exactly how that process takes place. So that brings me to my recap. We talked about some filtration items such as the uh, filter envelope or the filter pad has to be changed once a day. Remember, if we're not doing that, what we can end up seeing is that filter pump motor tripping out because it got too hot and it was struggling to bring that oil back up. So therefore that thermal overload trips and then we have to reset it. Now remember, if we do go to reset that, that we need to give it roughly about 30 minutes to cool down before we can reset it. And remember that filter pump motor is gonna be located at the back of the fryer and we would need to pull that out to gain access to it. Also, we talked about the filter uh, envelope assembly and what that's gonna look like in the pan. Remember that when we're installing a new envelope on that woven filter screen, we wanna make sure that we fold those corners over at a 45 degree angle first and then fold that edge over so that we get that proper seal. Because remember, if it's not sealed, what we can run into is getting crumbs into the filter system and that is what that is also gonna lead to uh, service calls as well. So also remember with that, you could be using the filter clips or you might have a triangular bar in your store that's gonna end up sealing that folded edge over completely. So we need to make sure that we're using those. Then also remember, um, sometimes we could run into a situation where we have filter lockout because after a certain amount of cook drops, the fryer is gonna lock us out until we go ahead and do a filtration. So um, with that also remember that we wanna make sure that we're not letting that filter pump motor run too long after it's brought all that oil back up to the fry pot because what can result from that is we can actually wear that pump out prematurely because we've sat there and let it ran too long with no oil going through it. And it's gonna wear down those Teflon rollers inside the pump. So that's something to keep in mind and a good habit to get into. Then also remember we talked about some of the pressure uh, components and how they work throughout that entire operation. Remember that if we're overfilling the fry pot with oil, that this has a huge impact on the entire uh, pressure operation of the fryer. Remember how we talked about it can end up clogging up our dead weight valve, it can clog up our safety relief valve, as well as our steam stack and also our pressure solenoid. Remember, each one of those items, it can cause different things. So remember, if we're seeing a situation where our fryer is not releasing pressure at the end of a cook cycle and we have to come up here and try and turn this, it still won't um, come undone. So we end up having to pull this ring to get the pressure outside of the fry pot. Remember, that's most likely because our pressure solenoid is gummed up with oil. And remember, it resulted from too much oil inside the fry pot to begin with. We shouldn't have to pull this ring under any normal circumstances. This would be for an emergency situation only. So remember, if we're seeing that, then we need to uh, see about getting service to get our pressure system taken care of. Also remember if we're seeing a situation where we're seeing oil and water spewing out of the top of our stack, that is a situation where the steam stack is actually clogged at the bottom coming up here to the front on our condensation line. And again, that comes from too much oil inside the system and it collects inside here. So a good tip to look and see if you have too much oil inside your fry pot and if you're not sure, you should only see water coming out of this condensation line during a cooking process. If you're seeing an oily mixture residue, then that's a good indicator that you have too much oil inside your fry pot. So with that being said, the last couple things we talked about is a situation where we could have steam leaking around our lid assembly. And the two things that we can do there is to make sure that we're reversing that lid gasket every 90 days. And also at that same time, we're doing a limit stop adjustment so that it puts the correct amount of pressure on our lid assembly. Remember that there's instructional videos for both of those tasks online on the help channel here. So be sure to check those out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open this up at this time for questions. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and throw those into the chat box and we'll get those answered for you. So it sounds like we have a couple questions here. Scott's gonna go ahead and read those off for me. First thing I was just gonna point out is, is there was a comment about how they're on the inside of the door 
is where you're going to have some instructions on reversing the lid gasket and doing a lid adjustment in the event you don't have access to, to video. Um, so that comment was, we also have additional information right here on the inside of our door for both doing the limit stop adjustment and also for reversing the lid gasket. So if you don't have access to that video online, then you can reference the inside of your door for that. I believe the second comment was what, or the question was on the inside of the lid here, if we zoom in, they were asking what this piece here is. And what this is, is for at the end of the cook cycle, when you open your lid up, you have this channel right here that has a hole on the bottom side. And this is for all the condensation to collect and drip into right here so that it can then go out to our next or go out to the steam stack on our next cook cycle. So it collects inside here. And I believe the third question was, what about filter lockout? If I do a filtration and I'm still seeing that filter lockout coming up, what could that be? So we've ran into this situation before with some customers. And what that can actually be is we would have a situation where after they've done a filtration, it might still say filter lockout on the screen. So it could be one of two different things. Either we could have a drain switch that has failed mechanically and it is stuck in the closed position. So therefore the control does not recognize that switch being open and that the filtration has taken place because when we open our drain valve to drain the oil down to our filter pan, it actually opens up that switch. So we could have a faulty uh, drain switch. The other item is, is if someone is trying to trick the control and quickly opens that valve and closes it, the control has to see that valve open for a certain amount of time before it will recognize that that filtration has been done. So we could run into two different situations there. We could have a faulty drain pan switch, and then we could also, um, have a situation where it wasn't open long enough. So that's something to keep in mind. So we'll go ahead and wrap today's training up, everyone. Thanks for joining and hope you have a great day. Take care, everyone.